Today we're going to talk about solving one-step equations. And before we get started, I want to give you a demonstration and let you know that the that the equations that we're gonna that we're going to work today are just the four basic equations. These are equations that you need to know in order to get sol in in order to get used to solving equations. Okay. So, um, an equation is nothing more than a than a balance scale. I like to look at it as a balance scale, where the balance here represents the equal sign. And and what I want to say is that if in order for this balance to be to remain equal, if I add one green to this side that causes the the balance scale to sort of tip to tip this way in order for me to allow this equation to balance again I have to place another green on the other side in order for that equation to return to balance also if I remove two from this side that will require the scale to be tilted again but in order for me to bring that scale back to balance I have to remove two from this side and by removing two from that side that allows the scale to remain balanced again so that's all solving equation is it's adding something to both sides or subtracting something from both sides or dividing something on both sides or multiplying something on both sides. That's all equation is. That's all it is. Okay? So let's get started. Our first example is x plus 3 equals 7. Now remember, this equal sign is our balance. This side equals this side. It may not look like that, but it is. So we want to find value of x. And in order to do that, we need to isolate our x or get the x on the side by itself. Okay? Uh, so in order for me to get this x on the side by itself, I need to remove this 3, this positive 3. Well, in order for me to remove this positive 3, I need to do the opposite of, of plus 3, which is subtract 3. So I'm going to subtract 3, not on one side. If I just subtract it on this side, my scale is going to tip because I've subtracted 3 on this side and now I have more on my right side than my left side so in order for me to bring that scale balance again I'm going to, to have to subtract 3 on the other side of the equation and I'm going to draw my line now if you watched the video on on adding integers you know that if you have a, a positive 3 and a negative 3, they, they create a zero pair. So this right here is really zero now. That's nothing. They cancel each other out. Well, what am I left with? I'm left with x on my left-hand side and 4 on my right-hand side, and both sides are equal. Now, most teachers want you to check your solution, so let's do that. So the first thing you want to do when you check your solution is write the original down again. Then I'm going, right now I think that x equals 4. So since I think that x equals 4, I'm going to substitute this 4 in for my x. Both sides should be equal. So I'm going to bring my 7 down. Well, what is 4 plus 3? 4 plus 3 is 7.
Let's work the next one. The second basic equation is well the purpose of solving the equation is to isolate the x get the x on the side by itself so I need to move this minus 4 in order for me to move this minus 4 I have to add 4 to both sides again that created a zero pair negative 4 plus 4 equals 0 so that's going to leave me with x on the left and 10 plus 4 is 14 on the right. Now I need to check my solution. So I'm going to write down my original. Right now I think that x equals 14. So I'm going to substitute the 14 for my x in my equation down here. So on this side I have 10. And what is 14 minus 4? 14 minus 4 is 10. So since I end up with the same number on both sides, I know that the solution is correct, and I know that x equals 14. All right. The third basic equation that we're going to talk about is... 4x equals 20. Well, with this equation, I need to separate, I need to isolate this x on the side by itself away from this 4. This x is being multiplied by this 4. So when your equation gets to this point, whenever you have x multiplied by a number which equals another number you want to apply you want to apply the division property of equality no that's a big word but the only only thing you're doing the only thing the division property of equality means is that you're going to divide something on both sides so I'm going to since it's being multiplied by the four I'm going to do the opposite of multiplication which is division and I'm going to divide both sides by four we know that 4 divided by 4 is 1, so they cancel each other out. So I'm left with 4 divided by 4 is 1, bring down my x, equals 20 divided by 4 is 5. Again, remember from our, other, from our previous videos, we, can, we don't have to write 1x equals 5, we can just write x equals 5. Now let's check it. I have 4x equals 20. Right now I believe x equals 5, so I want to substitute the 5 in for my x. I want to bring my 20 down. And what is 4 times 5? Well, 4 times 5 is 20. Since I have the same result on both sides, I know that this is correct, and I know that x equals 5. And the last ba basic equation that we're going to work is this one. With this, with this problem, you have two choices. You can either divide both, since, these, since this number, this fraction, and this variable, they're being multiplied, I can divide both, both sides by one half, just like I did over here. Okay? But you'll end up with something that looks like this. going to divide both sides by one half. Okay, th that's okay, but um, for some people it's it's a little confusing. So what I want to do, I want to use the, I want to multiply something on both sides. 
I want to multiply both sides by this fraction, which is by the reciprocal of this fraction, which is 2 over 1. Let me go over that again. Since I have a fraction here, I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, or some people call it the multiplicative inverse, of 1 half, which is 2 over 1. Now, when you know that 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 times 2 is 2, so we're going to end up with 2 over 2x equals 6 times 2 is 12. Well, we know that 2 over 2 is really 1. x equals 12. Again, instead of me writing 1x, I can just write x equals 12. Now let me check, let me check to see if x does actually re equal 12. So I have 1 half x equals 6. I'm going to substitute the 12 for my x. So I have 1 half. Since x is 12, I'm going to substitute 12 for x. I know that 1 times 12 is 12. I know that 2 times 1 is 2 equals 6. Let me bring down my 6. What is 12 divided by 2? Well, 12 divided by 2 is 6. So therefore, 6 equals 6. I, I have the same on both sides. And I know that x equals 12. Again, these are just the four basic equation problems that you need to know before you solve any equation. If you have, I hope this helped you out a little bit. If you have any suggestions for future videos, I'd like for you to um, send me an email or send me comment or write in the comment section of my website. And I'll see you later.